LeBron posted six pictures on Instagram yesterday, all from his GQ cover story. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you've seen parts of it. Yeah. My favorite one, however, was the first one he posted. Um, I showed you this part yesterday. This was the cover of GQ. And then he posted a caption on his Instagram that I particularly enjoyed. It says, the kid from Akron is the greatest living athlete, according to my friends over at GQ. That's the part that I find interesting, but I'll read the rest to be fair. I truly appreciate the wonderful gesture and whether I am or not, I just want to inspire and empower as many people as I can while I grace this planet Earth. <laughs> Thank you again, GQ. Hashtag strive for greatness. Very inspirational. Do you not see what I'm about to say? It's a little arrogant, but it's a very inspirational. I just wanted you to be you to say that, yeah. not me. Yeah. But um, if you're the best in the world at something, you know. You don't need to advertise it. I mean, the magazine already did. And it's cool. Like, post six pictures of yourself on, the, on the cover. But don't say, I am the greatest athlete living but, but, but how come Odell GQ? Beckham, which who's a fragile perimeter athlete, Odell Beckham, people defend to the core when he's over the top and give me the ball. LeBron's the best basketball player for 15 years, and he writes in an Instagram, thank you, GQ, for calling me great. It's like No, he said, I am the greatest living athlete. He is. He is. But does that mean he should walk around telling no, but I mean, like, if You already he, have a magazine doing it. If, if Warren Buffett, if they're... Um, Kiplinger's financial magazine, Money Magazine came out, Barron's came out and said, Warren Buffett's the greatest living stockbroker. And Warren Buffett said, yeah, I'm the greatest living stock. Okay. I mean, it would be one thing if you're 38th best, but when you are the best, Muhammad Ali was cocky. Muhammad Ali had a right to be cocky. I was okay well, with it. Well, I agree. You have to have a degree of confidence, of yeah. strong confidence, in order to be an amazing player like LeBron is. And I would disagree. I don't think he is the greatest living athlete right now. Maybe current not living, but I will give him some credit when it comes to wh their explanation of why he's the greatest living athlete, and I think that you will agree with this. They're talking about when it comes to on-court greatness, he beats Michael Jordan and every other athlete because he has the legitimate potential to play the game of basketball at the highest level longer than anyone else. And he's even said, if I was the most consistent and was at the top of the food chain more than anybody in NBA history, then yeah, I, I can be the greatest. And you've talked about this too. He has longevity. He'll be around and at the top of his game for a very long time, which also explains why he likes to rest and kind of pace himself yeah. for the season because he wants to stay around for a long time. And if yeah. that's what makes him the best athlete, then I, I I get his motivation. Yeah. I'm just giving him a little credit. There you go. Did you notice something last night in the Cavs game? They did not play the Kyrie Irving tribute video. They had this whole thing planned out, and they didn't play it. And there are some different opinions on why that might have happened, or different reports, actually. Um, so Kyrie was booed during the player introductions. He was also booed every time he got the ball. So clearly, Cavs fans were not excited to see him. Uh, one report also went out that uh, the team, some of the players were upset that a video was even planned oh. and said they didn't want it played because he actually requested a trade, All right. which is interesting. Another one was that it was just kind of a floating moment and that it never presented itself as a good opportunity to play it. And another theory was that because of Gordon Hayward's injury, it didn't uh, seem appropriate. Yeah, that that that's... Yeah, that kind of changed the mood in the arena. Certainly changed it, the mood. I mean, you even see like Cleveland players; they couldn't yeah. look. It was so sad. I still, I still would have played it, and and I understand. Yes, he asked for the trade, but remember when Ray Allen left for Miami? That was like the worst thing ever, and still he doesn't even talk to some of the Celtics players from that time. And they still played the tribute video, and the fans appreciated it. So I think that they should have. But I understand there's a lot of reasons why they shouldn't. Um, and finally, in the Warriors game, something really, really surprised me, Colin, and I bet it surprised you too. Did you notice Nick Young yeah. and all of his threes? Yeah. I feel like many times throughout the game we saw something like this. Green checking the floor. Rockets get back in a hurry. Here's Young open. Four, three. Yes. Nick Young unconscious. Something like unconscious. He yeah. had six threes in the game, which means that he now holds the record for the most threes in a Warriors debut and in any season opener I was not expecting for Nick Young to be setting Warriors records in his first game Im Im immature players in mature environments can flourish Randy Moss had all sorts of issues but mm -hmm. you put him in the Patriots environment for two years and Randy Moss was the greatest player in league history for two years 
So, I mean, Nick Young, like we said it when it happened. I'm not a Nick Young fan, but you put him with Washington or L.A., you're like, ugh. You put him here, you're like, this is the Patriots. Smart, detailed, nuanced, respectful. You can put guys like this in. It's like I say, if you adopted a kid, this is why adoption agencies are like, they watch the family. If you have a history of, you know, a little dysfunction and immaturity given for a short period of time in a very high functioning environment, you can flourish. And I think Nick this year will probably now again, this is game one. You know, they played 11 guys last night, but Nick can shoot. Nobody doubts Nick can shoot like Nick's a shooter. I thought that Steve Kerr actually explained it best when he said Nick hit one shot in all of practice this summer. So what he showed me tonight is that he's a gamer. And I think that's very accurate for Nick Young. The thing I thought about the most, actually, when Gordon Hayward went down, first of all, yeah, that's extremely sad. I feel bad for the Celtics. I mean, they changed everything based on getting Gordon Hayward. But I looked at Kyrie's reaction, and I I feel really bad for him, too, because he made this decision based on Gordon Hayward being there and being able to contend. And it's going to be very hard at this point to do that. And he had to regain his composure all while he's playing against his former team on his former court, getting booed. Now the Celtics get the disabled player exception. So they have $8.4 million that they can work with Mm -hmm. um, and they get an extra roster spot to work with as well. So that will help them. But I'm going to look for the positive in this. They don't have Gordon Hayward and and The knock is that it's going to take them longer now to be able to contend. But I will say that the other players will be able to develop faster because Gordon Hayward isn't there taking up those minutes. So, for example, Jalen Brown, who you just heard from, he played 40 minutes and had 25 points. He's 20 years old. He's not going to get that with Hayward on the floor. So other guys will develop faster. Also, the critique even that you've given is that the Celtics are very young guys, right? Last night, they were playing in a situation with the most possible pressure you can have. You're playing yeah. LeBron. You've got the Kyrie thing. you got him being booed. Gordon Hayward goes down. They didn't show any bit of being young. They played extremely well. They rallied around together. They almost beat the Cavs. So I'm not worried about them being young anymore. I think they proved that they can they can play through some tough situations. Yeah, I don't think they're as good. Um, I think <clears throat> last night... Are was, you ignoring the score? I mean, did you see the score last night? First of all, game ones mean nothing. Golden State lost last night. I agree. It doesn't mean anything overall, but they yeah. competed with the Cavs without Gordon Hayward. And the Cavs and don't LeBron have Isaiah Thomas yet. And LeBron almost had a triple-double. Oh, come on. Now, oh, now Isaiah Thomas is great? No, Because last no, year you were saying he wasn't. No, he's a really good scorer. I wouldn't build my franchise around it, but uh, the Cleveland won without Isaiah Thomas. Once Isaiah Thomas gets here, it's like, oh, good Lord. He's oh, so, a- hey, a three, po- three points makes the difference. Okay. And finally, the other game last night, which went so late, uh, Chris Paul and the Rockets played the Warriors. Chris is hurt. He looked yeah, awful. Yeah, his. I'm going to tell you a little bit more about that later. His his yeah. knee injury, which is why he wasn't playing towards the end of the game. But he is also uh, giving some more reasons why he left the Clippers. And if you noticed last night, he did not have the ball in his hands as much. Yeah. And he was basically saying this is kind of a culture thing. If you're not trying to contend with the Warriors, then what are we trying to do? A reason why he left because he didn't feel they could contend. Yeah. And he said, I had the ball in my hands way too much. I'm tired of dribbling and having to do so much. I would love to be able to get on the wing and shoot the ball, which is what you saw him do yeah. last night. I just don't know if that's a great fit for him. Yeah, it's, it, you can make the argument. I mean, I think, it, again, I, I don't take much out of last night other than Boston had a bad night. But I, I everything else I watched, I'm like, it's such a – you know, I have had NBA coaches tell me this. The NFL coaches do this a little less, but they do it. A lot of this stuff in the first two months, you're not – you're trying to figure out your defensive rotations. Yeah. I mean, good God. Boston's roster, Cleveland's roster are like brand-new rosters. So I, I just don't – I don't take anything from it. it. It certainly takes some time. I just think that last night showed that the Celtics, the younger guys, are going to be able to step up a little bit more. It's obviously going to take longer for them to contend like they had hoped. Um, but it was a fun night. Of basketball. It, it was a wild night of sports. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from the herd or go watch a few segments from the newest show on FS1. First things first with Chris Carter and Nick Wright.